السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم اما بعد. Or even if you don't understand the Arabic language, I guess you've heard someone's name, some prophet's name tonight more than any other prophet. Which prophet was that? Whose prophet was that? That was Musa alayhi salam. And it was the story of Musa again. Remember what he said about Musa? And the story was repeated many, many times in the Quran. And every time the story of Musa was mentioned, it would be mentioned from a different perspective, focusing on a different angle. This surah right now, and this action, this recitation, it started early in the life of Musa alayhi salam at his birth, that time, the early time of his life alayhi salatu wasalam. So what's the purpose of that? What was the point of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Fir'aun ala fil ard wa ja'ala ala shia that Fir'aun he became so, he became a very a tyrant in this land. Uh, corruption spreading all over the place. In order to maintain his power, what did he do? He divided the people, made them divided so that they would never be united against him. Now that's a party that is, uh, what we see today is not new. And many tyrants of our time, they follow Fir'aun. Uh, that's his sunnah for them. So they're following his path, Allah Musta'an, trying to divide the people to fight each other based on ethnicities, religion and any other factor, they basically they will do that kind of a system to maintain power, absolute power. That's what he did. And then the story begins with Musa السلام, when he was born during the time of that Fir'aun who had a dream that one of the children of Bani Israel will kill him or basically will destroy his kingdom. He panicked. And when he asked his people, he said, what do you think about this dream? They said, look at them, these are all like slaves to us. Give us the command, we'll finish them. But they were afraid that if they finish Bani Israel, that means that cheap labor, slavery, will be gone from, the, from Egypt, and eventually that will affect the economy, the quality of life that they have. So what was the solution? He said, listen, let's just destroy the children who were born that year. Meaning just the boys who were killed that year, because his prophecy was during that year, one child was born, and he is going to be the person or the, the child that will grow up to destroy his kingdom. So that was his plan. He would go and basically go after these children, and any child that was born that year, any boy was born that year, will be killed. The mother of Musa was pregnant, and she gave birth to a child, a boy. She became scared. Just like any other Israeli woman, she knows what's going to come. When she heard that they're looking right now for the children, Subhanahu what is what she's going to do with that child? What she's going to do with him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her an inspiration. Ohayna ila ummi Musa an Means we inspire to the mother of Musa. Keep your child with you. Just keep him with you. Nurse, ardri, nurse. Fa'ida khifti alayhi. When you become afraid for him, when you become scared for him, now that's the thing that subhanAllah that the, the that the command is like a paradox in our own yani, rules. In our law, it's kind of different, different command. Allah subhanahu wa is telling him, if you are scared for him, throw him in the yam, throw him in the water. For us, in that kind of, again, that understanding doesn't make any sense. Because if you tell a mother, if you have a child, nurse him, keep him with you. If you feel afraid for him or scared, what do you need to do? Run for your life, hide him, just eventually whatever it takes to take care of the child. But you tell a mother that if you become scared for him, just throw him in the water, and subhanAllah, I mean, it's an amazing thing. How could even you ask a mother who's holding a baby just a few days old, maybe a few weeks old, to put her baby in a crib and just let it go on the water, slide on the water, start surfing, going away from her? How can you even convince a mother to do that? But it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspiring to him. And that ayah shows one of the main principles of the believer. And that's a tawakkul ala Allah. Full reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam? That's another example. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says this about this ayah. This is, one of, this is one of the greatest manifestation of tawakkul. Meaning, Ibrahim alayhi salam, at least he was a prophet, right? He was a man, strong young man, 
and he was flying, you know, into the, in the air. Jibreel came to him, says, listen, do you need anything? Can I help you? He says, from you I need nothing, but I need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was relying on Allah azza wa jalla, and he has the right to rely on Allah azza wa jalla. But in the scenario of this woman, she's a woman, a mother, for a young baby. She just barely gave birth to that child, just recently. And physically, she could be very, very weak. And she was in slavery. So all these circumstances make this woman without any hope. So to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something unique in the life of this woman. But Allah subhanahu wa showing this example to us. So this woman, she had no one but Allah azza wa jalla. So when that inspiration came to her, she trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that child, and she put that baby on the water, and she let it go. But like any other mother, even though she knows that she's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's inspiration to her, as she let it, she was letting the baby away, and naturally, her heart now starts panicking. Oh my God. In Karat Latub Dibe, she almost disclosed that. She said, this is my baby. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbat ala qalbiha. He tied that trust and that reliance on her heart. Then, again, just like any other mother, even though she trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but still she sent his sister. Qalat qussi. You know what? Go track him. Go. She started walking on the, on the bank, on the side of the river. And she was following him, following that, that, that crib as it was traveling on the water. And she was checking to see where is it going to end. And then she saw it end. It ended in the house of whom? The, the Fir'aun. The man, she was scared that he's going to kill him. Look how the plan, the divine plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He brought him in the hand to the hand of the man who's supposed to kill him. Now the mother, when she heard the news, she panicked again. Oh my God, he is gone. Khalas, Musa is gone. SubhanAllah. But Allah had another plan for her. The first plan is the wife of the Fir'aun. She didn't have children. By the will of Allah Azza Was it from her, from Fir'aun? Basically, she could not conceive children. And now when she heard that baby crying on the surface of the water, and her servant, her servant, they brought that baby to her. Allah subhanahu wa says in another ayat, وَالْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي And I put love, I put love in the heart of people for you. And this is something unique. You know sometimes you see some babies, you just love them for the first sight. Some other babies you say, لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا Musa was that kind of baby that whenever anyone sees him, he would just fall in love with him. Everybody sees that baby, they would love his baby. Mashallah, he was so cute. So eventually she said, that's mine. The wife of the Quran, she said, this is going to be mine. I'll take him. I'm going to have him as my son. I'm going to raise him to be my child. But they all know that this child belongs to whom? Someone from Bani Israel. Why is that? Because why would anyone from the Quran party, from the Quran family or, or, or clan, would throw their children like this? They don't need to to the children anyway. But Musa, he must have must be from that clan with the Bani Israel, the slaves, and that's why they throw him away. So they said, never mind, I'll keep him. Quran reluctantly, of course, accepted because it was his wife. So he just he gave in, said, Fine, he's your baby. You raise him. So he grew up in the house of Quran. The second plan or the third plan afterwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this baby refuse any wood nurse that they would give him, that they would bring her, bring, her, bring her to him. So they give all the witnesses in the city, he wouldn't accept any. Means he would not accept any woman. And then his sister, when she heard that they were announcing any witness available in the city that would like to come and so on. I mean, in the mother of the wife of the Fir'aun, when she see that baby becoming so grumpy and so fuzzy, that she would say, you know what, just throw him away, give him to anyone. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her heart attached to him. She says, no, no, no. I need to feed him, I need someone to feed him. So his sister, she came to him and said, listen, if you want, I know some family that can take care of that baby for you. They will be very good for you. So she brought his mother into the house of the Fir'aun, paid and well maintained in a very special royal court to nurse her own child. Isn't this amazing? Allah, this is just like a fairy tale, but it's real. It's reality. 
And that shows that when you put your trust and tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what you did. Pharaoh grew up slowly and gradually, I mean Musa alayhi salam, he grew up slowly and gradually until he became a very strong man. Why do we say he was a strong man? Because when you grow up in the palace back then, you grow up to become what? A general. Very strong. You always did the armies. That was back then. Today they only just sit on Congress and in the Senate and that's it. <laughs> and the poor people go to fight for them. Back then they were leaders. They would be on the, the head of these armies. So Musa grew up to become strong. So one day as he was passing by, he saw but two people were fighting. So one of them, the very Israel, the other one from Pharaoh family, or from basically the people of Pharaoh. So basically, his, his, uh, the, very, the, the Israeli man, he says, help me. This guy's, you know, he's going after me. He just pushed him. He pushed him, he killed him. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine a man in the power of Musa alayhi salam? He pushed the guy, he finished. How did he fall on something? Allah Allah, but he just pushed him, and that was it. Even Musa himself was shocked and surprised. How could this kill a man? But that shows you also how strong he was, alayhi salam. As a matter of fact, he was so strong, and his story shows that, that he was very strong, because subhanAllah, Allah prepared him in a way to deal with people like Bani Israel. Because people like Bani Israel need a man like Musa, alayhi salam. And if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for Musa, alayhi salatu was salam, so these many would be very difficult to deal with them. But SubhanAllah, eventually the story goes on and on until Musa, he had to flee the city, go to Madian, and then come back again. But this time when he came back, he came back from a completely different person. He came back as a messenger, a messenger of Allah, and Allah gave him at the end victory. The point of tawakkul and relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was mentioned in detail in the surah. Because the previous surah, the surah before that, surah al at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the subject of tawakkul briefly. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْعَتَّمُ Tawakkal عَلَى اللَّهِ Put your trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْحَتَّمُ Because you are following the clear manifest truth. That was given to the Prophet And then that principle of tawakkul was explained to him in the following surah, in the story of Musa and his mother. So if you ever have a trouble, and you see that difficult times around you, circumstances are not in, you know, basically in your favor, you need to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I enrich or how can I revive that feeling? How can I strengthen that feeling, go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, the stories of Musa alayhi salam, the stories of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Read these stories and you shall see a very strong example that will help you see wallahi through these lines and the words of Allah azza wa jal, how you can truly put your trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.